most welcome everyone watching us live on all our social media platforms. If you're watching us via YouTube, I believe that you're sharing, you're liking, you're commenting, you're subscribing to that YouTube channel. You're also ringing that bell so that every time you're going live, you can be the first person to be notified. If you're watching us on Facebook, please follow those pages. Follow the page. Follow the account. Leave your comment. Let us know where you're watching us live from. It's a blessing to have you. You are very important. And God bless you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you for such a moment that you've given us by your grace to hear your word. We are surrendered to you, O oh God. We empty our hearts before you. We surrender our hearts that you may minister to us, O oh God. Speak to us in the name of Jesus. We are nothing without you. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of thy mouth, O oh God. Let thy word proceed out of thy mouth. Spirit of God, use these lips of clay to communicate the mysteries of heaven we give you praise and glory in Jesus name we pray and the church said amen the church said amen faithfulness in preparation faithfulness in preparation is what uh, we are continuing with um, I'm doing a part two of faithfulness in preparation and before we read the book of Matthew chapter 25 let me bring to your attention that we are egos Dominion House International here in Nairobi, Kenya specifically in Nairobi CBD in the heart of Nairobi and we are in Sunbeam Shopping Complex you come up to 5th floor Sunbeam is opposite Equity Bank or NAT headquarters and we are along Fangano Street so if you can locate in Fangano Street it will be very easy for you to see an Equity Bank and right opposite Equity Bank you will see a tall building called Sunbeam Shopping Complex. Just climb up to fifth floor and you shall find us there. There is also a number down on your screen. You can call that number and I'll be glad to pray with you. I'll be glad to give you directions. Amen. Amen. Faithfulness in preparation. Faithfulness in preparation. Now, I began our teaching by saying that it's in preparation where God tests, he tests the level of faithfulness in his children. It is in preparation where God will test the level of your faithfulness. God has to test your faithfulness. God loves you. He cares for you. He wants to use you. But God does not work with children that are not faithful. God does not use children that are not faithful in the vineyard. He will always come and test your faithfulness in preparation. Therefore, in this stage and season of preparation is a very vital stage for every Christian, for every born again. Because in preparation is where God will come and test your level of faithfulness. Remember, this is where now, after God has tested your faithfulness, He knows what to give to you. He knows what you can bear. He knows it's in preparation after He has tested your faithfulness. He will know the kind of weight of His gifts you can bear, you can carry. Now, that is how God learns you in preparation when you will come to test your faithfulness God is learning you so does God need to learn a man yes I know you know that God is all knowing he knows everything he knows from beginning to the end but men change why do I say that we are not robots men are not robots no one is a robot. God has given man will. So you can decide to serve God 
willingly or you can decide not to serve God. And because man has will, God has to test your faithfulness. If God was dealing with the robots, if we were robots, then God does not need to test you. He just needs to set you to serve him. That's all. A robot has no will. So, when I say in preparation, that is where God will learn you. God learns you. It's because you have will. I need you to understand so that you will not say, so God needs to learn men. So God doesn't know men. No, it's not like that. It is because man has will. And you can choose to serve God or not to serve God. You can choose to be faithful or not to be faithful. You can choose to be obedient or not be obedient. You can choose to say yes or say no. That is why there is heaven, there is hell. It's your choice. That's why you can serve God or you can rebel against God. It's your choice. He has given it to man. It's up to you to make up your mind. Are you going to be faithful? So that is why God has to test your faithfulness in the place of preparation. So it is in preparation where God learns the faithfulness of his children. Please mark that. Whether you are truly ready to serve God or you are there because of your other things. Because of other motives. Now, it's important to understand that faithfulness is into levels. And I say that. Faithfulness is into levels. Faithfulness. There are people that are more faithful than others. That is why a father, a mother can trust this particular son, this particular daughter with these documents more than this one. Because faithfulness mark you, they are from the same father, from the same mother. We can have five siblings, but one is more faithful than the other. If you are a parent, you know what I'm talking about. You know there is a child that you trust more. You know there is this girl that is more faithful and you can trust them with this. And there is another one that you will say, ah, if I give this one, I'm doomed. So faithfulness is into levels. And it's a choice that you have to make whether you're going to be faithful to God or not. I want us to check a parable that Jesus gave in the book of Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25 verse 19 but before we read verse 19 Bible begins to say from verse 14 that the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country and I want you to watch that Jesus was very intentional when he said the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country far country so he's not around to a far country and he called his own servants and delivered his goods to them and to one he gave five talents the second one he gave two talents the third one he gave one talent and when he gave the talents to his servants immediately he went on a long journey. <laughs> oh, he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded. And made another five. Likewise, the one who had two, he traded, made another two. But the one that received one talent, look at what he did. What he did. But he who had received one, one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. Now verse 19. After a long time. Somebody say a long time. <laughs> After a long time. That's why sometimes God has the character of taking some time. After a long time. The Lord of those servants came 
and settled accounts with them. There is always a moment when God will come and settle accounts with you. When this wicked servant that dug a hole and hid the money of the, of the master, he enjoyed life. And I'm sure he was telling other guys, the other two servants, that were busy trading. He was busy discouraging them that this guy is not coming back. Ah, don't mind. <laughs> I am very sure. It's not written. But I know in, in him he was saying, ah, I don't care. It has taken time. When is he coming? He can come in time. Perhaps any moment. But I'm sure the wicked servant was saying in him after. Because the, servant, the master came after a long time. That long time doesn't say 10 years. Doesn't say 5 years. It doesn't say 20 years. The long he took. Finally one day he came. To settle accounts. And when he came to settle accounts. Verse 20. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents saying, Lord, you have delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. Uh -huh. His Lord said to him, verse 21, well done. Watch that. Well done. Good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things I will make you ruler over many things enter into the joy of your Lord he also who had received two talents came and said Lord you delivered to me two talents look I have gained two more talents beside them his Lord said to him well done good and faithful servant you have been faithful over a few things I will make you ruler over many things look at that faithful over a few things are you watching that trend of the Lord is saying you have been faithful over a few things I will make you what? Are you there? <laughs> well done good and faithful servant you have been faithful over a few things I will make you ruler over many things but the statement is faithful faithful good and faithful servant now then who he who had received the one talent came and said lord i knew you to be a hard man reaping where you have not sown look at how he's telling him <laughs> you are a hard man there was one sister the journey became too long for her and it was not easy and the prayer she began to pray was Punda Mechoka. <laughs> Punda Mecho. Hey, bus. When you tell God Punda, for international friends, Punda Mechoka is uh, yeah. it's a phrase that politicians use. The donkey is, is tired. How do you say it? <laughs> Somebody should tell me. Punda mechoka. And she was busy praying, telling God, Punda mechoka bana. Eh? The donkey is tired. I'm tired of carrying the Lord. Your Lord is heavy. I'm tired of being used. That was our prayer. And eventually she left. And we bless the Lord. So this wicked servant says, I knew you to be a hard man. Reaping where you have not sown. And gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look. There you have what is yours. He said this is the gift you gave me. I, I brought it back to you. I hid it. Uh -huh. But his Lord answered and said to him. You wicked and lazy servant. You wicked and lazy servant. Watch that. You wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown. And gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest so take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents 
take the talent from him and give it to the, to whom there are ten talents. 29. For to everyone who has, more will be given. To everyone who has, more will be given. And he will have abundance. But from him who does not have even what he has will be taken away and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now this parable is a teaching on the test of faithfulness. In what this particular master had given the servants is a test of faithfulness. After the master tested their faithfulness, the faithfulness of the three servants, that's when he knew who to give what. Adria, that after he had tested the level of the faithfulness of the three servants, that's when he knew who to give what and whom not to give when. I mean, and, and whom not to be given. It's in preparation that God learns the faithfulness of his children. It's in preparation where God learns the faithfulness of his children. So look at this master. He went and he came after a long time. And when he comes, the servants are there giving an account because the master has come to settle accounts. Now, there is always a time when God comes to settle accounts with you and is that it, it is at that moment where he would test the level of your faithfulness my question is when the Lord comes to settle accounts with you will you be found faithful whether you are a preacher whether you are a businessman or woman whether in the marketplace or in the altar, whether he gave you the assignment to intercede for God's work. Maybe your work is to be an intercessor. Maybe the assignment he gave you was to pray for the man of God, nothing else. And there's a day when God comes to settle accounts with men, will you be found faithful? When he comes, there was one servant that was found not faithful. When the master came to settle accounts, he wasn't found faithful. Now consider these words or these statements or sentences. Number one, well done, good and faithful servant. Consider that. Well done good and faithful servant now ask yourself are these my words or will God tell me otherwise consider those statements well done good and faithful servant you were faithful over a few things I will make you ruler over many things Ah, consider that consider that statement well done good and faithful servant you have been faithful over a few things I will make you ruler over many things enter into the joy of your Lord will that be your portion or will it be you wicked and lazy servant so it is for you to choose my prayer is that you choose to be a faithful servant choose to be faithful because God will come and settle accounts with you will you be found faithful Will you be found faithful? <laughs> Sentence number three. Everyone who has more will be given. A 
and you will have abundance. The one who traded and brought five more. Now he brought ten to the master. The one who has more will be given and will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Now consider those statements and make a choice for yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, make a choice. You know God is a gracious God. I know. But when it comes to faithfulness, he doesn't care. You had a choice to make. Mordecai. You know Mordecai? Even after saving the life of the king, he was not rewarded immediately. But he did not get tired of still serving God. Hello? There was a conspiracy to kill the king in Esther chapter 2. Some guys wanted to kill the king, to assassinate the king. And Mordecai overheard their strategy and reported the matter. And those guys were slaughtered. They were killed. But Mordecai was not rewarded instantly. What is God doing? What is this thing with God that he does? <laughs> okay. He did not get tired of still serving God. Because that's where the problem is. We get tired and that's why that sister was praying Punda Mechoka. Because we get tired because oh, the reward was not instant. Mordecai has done something good. He is not even remembered. It was written down and it's like nobody remembered that he did something nice. <laughs> Let me say something here. Interesting. He did not get tired of still serving God and that's when God knew he is a faithful servant. He can be faithful. When God spoke to me about Mordecai, hey, I was shaking inside out. <laughs> because Mordecai has done something good. He's not being remembered, he remembered immediately. That is when now, when God has checked the faithfulness of Mordecai, you know it is God who commanded the king to reward Mordecai. Okay. Esther chapter 6. Esther chapter 6. Verse 1. Esther chapter 6 verse 1. That night the king could not sleep. So one was commanded to bring the book of the records of the chronicles. And they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigdana and Teresh, two of the king's eunuchs, the doorkeepers who had sought to lay hand, hands on King Osiris. Then the king said, What honor or dignity has been bestowed on Mordecai for this? Now it's important for you to understand that in chapter 2, it's mentioned that Mordecai stopped the plot against the king. However, it wasn't until chapter 6 that he was rewarded for it. Now, let me... I, I, I wanted to know how long did it take and theologians say it took five years hey. it took five years Mordecai saves the king the thing is recorded down and it looks like there's nothing what is God checking can you be faithful when God has not paid your bills can you still be faithful when God has not solved that problem? When you're going through some trouble and some pain and you're praying every moment and it looks like God is just watching you. 
My goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mordecai. God is checking the level of his faithfulness. After five years, according to theologians, after five years, after five years, <laughs> woo, it took five years for Mordecai to be remembered. I don't know how long it has taken for you. I know you're saying God has taken too long. I'm tired of waiting. I don't know. Punda mechoka. Punda mechoka. Hello? Pastor. Punda mechoka. Once upon a time, some years back, I had an assistant pastor and he stood on the altar. Not here, it was another place. He said, Hi. Hapa mungu mechelewa. He, he, he had girlish signs of doing things. So he, <laughs> he was from another country. He said, Hapa mungu. Mordecai has done something good and God still keeps him at the gate. The guy is the guy is still at the gate and takes him five years and one night the king could not sleep. Why, why is the king not sleeping this particular night? It's because the perfect time had come. <laughs> The perfect time had come. Now I, oh, let me not say that. It was in training that God was teaching Mordecai to be faithful with what God had given him. Even the gift of being faithful. He was in training. He was in training. So you can imagine. He saves the king. He's not remembered. But he continues to be there at the gate. But he's going through a lot. Haman comes, finds him there. And Haman is mistreating him. And Haman is planning evil. And Haman has written letters. And they're planning to execute all the Jews. But Mordecai is still around. And Mordecai is still faithful. Mordecai is found faithful. Yeah, shall you be found faithful? be found faithful will you pass the test of faithfulness bow your head before the Lord bow your head before the Lord it's a question you have to ask yourself interrogate your heart that Mordecai did something good he wasn't remembered instantly he was not instant he took him five years still at the gate he was still there and things were not even looking good because Mordecai, I mean, is being bullied by Haman. Haman is always passing there and bullying him. He wants him to bow. He wants him to compromise. But Mordecai is not ready to compromise. Have you compromised on the standards of God? Woo. This is my prayer for you. Give me some sound. This is my prayer for you. That when God comes to test your level of faithfulness, you will be found ready and faithful to be called a good and a faithful servant. Stretch your hands, your father. I have spoken your word. I pray for your daughter. I pray for your son. the test of faithfulness everyone under the sound of my voice this is my prayer that you will pass the test of faithfulness you will pass the test of faithfulness After Joseph has done something good he took him two years of waiting there the guy who he did good to him forgot about him it's only after two years that he remembered him oh I pray 
Even when men have forgotten the good you did to them. May you remain to be faithful to your God. May you remain to be faithful to your God. Did you do good and expect that man to do good to you? Oh, you are wrong. Let your faithfulness be unto God and not unto man. When you wait for man, man will disappoint you. When you wait for man, man will disappoint you. But God will never disappoint you. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that you will pass the test of faithfulness. You will pass the test of faithfulness. You will pass. You are not among the people that fail in the test of faithfulness. You are not that those folks that fail. You will not fail. I say you will not fail the test of faithfulness. That God will find you in that gate. God will find you in that gate when he decides to remember you. God will find you in that gate. You know, sometimes it looks like God will keep you in a gate. Like he kept Mordecai in that gate. And Mordecai is waiting on God on that gate. And one day God came to that gate. Mordecai was faithful in that gate. Be faithful in your gate. Be faithful in your gate. If you are not born again, this is your moment. This is your time. Give your life to Jesus. What have you been waiting for? He loves you. He gave his only begotten son. That if you believe in him, you will not perish but have eternal life. Can you believe in his son today? Say, Father, I believe in your son Jesus Christ eternal life is mine write my name in the book of life forgive me and wash me with your blood Jesus in Jesus name amen if you pray that prayer you are saved you are born again please don't stay at home do yourself a favor you are doing it to yourself. Look for a Bible-believing church around where you are. Where they are preaching Christ. Where the doctrine is good and pure. There is, the Spirit of God will always bear a witness in you. That this is the place to be. Where Christ is revealed. If you happen to be in Nairobi and Zenvarans, you can join this church. This is the place to be. We are here in Nairobi city center. In Sunbeam Shopping Complex, you come up to 50th floor. We are opposite Equity Bank or not headquarters, and we are along Mfangano Street. There's also a number down on the screen. This number, you can call this number. When you call this number, you will get me. I'll pray with you, I'll direct you, and God will do you good. Thank you so much for your time. Remember, remember to pass the test of faithfulness be found in that gate that God assigned you to be some have left if you left go back to your gate and God bless you shalom shalom shalom